Is it possible to P-rank every level in Ultra Kill and still get a refund from Steam? In case you didn't know, Steam has a refund policy where if you play a game within 14 days of purchase and have under 2 hours of playtime, you'll get a refund. So I essentially have to P-rank every Ultra Kill level from a fresh save in under 2 hours. I don't even know if that's possible, but I guess we'll find out. After a stupidly long intro, the challenge begins in 0-1, and we currently only have a single gun. This crappy little piercer. So, style's gonna be kinda hard to get in this level. However, there is a strategy. Lots and lots of parries. Oh, look at that. And just like that, we got the first P rank of the run. Now it was time to move on to 0-2, the level where we would get our beloved marksman. We needed to be extremely careful in this level due to the amount of deadly traps that could kill me in an instant. Luckily I avoided them all and finished off the level getting us the second P rank of the run. 0-3 was going to be a little bit different. We start by buying the sharpshooter, an insanely good weapon for style, clearing room after room until we get the swords machine, the second boss in the run. We absolutely mangle his stupid yellow rectangle of a forehead with a nice sharpshooter setup, then proceed to shoot at it until it dies. As a parting gift to us, he drops his shotgun on the floor, a tool that will become very useful for us in this run. We continue through the level, projectile boosting in every chance we get. Oh, and also turns out Swords Machine didn't die. I definitely didn't already know that. And we'd have to fight him once again, except this time we can just bully him with his own weapon. And there you go, 3 down, 28 more to go. At the beginning of 0-4, we grab the pump charge shotgun from the shop, and uh, just watch this. Oh, that was so clean, dude. This trend of obliterating everything in this level continued until we dropped into this pit. Rewarding our efforts with another P rank. It was time for 0 5, the climax level of the prelude. And we'd be facing off against two Cerberi with nothing more than a pew pew pistol and a strangely rectangular shotgun. Luckily for us, I'd say I'm pretty good at Ultra Kill, so this level wasn't too bad, and we even beat it in under a minute. A quick interruption make sure to subscribe to the channel to help me surpass Hakita and subs, and make sure to stick around for the end of the video because things get quite interesting. No! No, I'm dead! Oh no, oh no, oh no. <sighs> Finally, a level that isn't red, orange, and brown. This is 1-1, and I must admit it's a lot calmer of a level than the first five. But these goddamn purple robots spawn in just to ruin the mood. Pressing onwards, we find a new weapon, a weapon that we'll use like three times and never touch again. In the last room of the level, we break the glass directly above us to press the first of four buttons that will grant us access to a secret weapon. And boom, level complete with a juicy P rank. 1-2 starts off pretty normal, but the further we get through the level, the more off things start to feel. That's until we get to this hallway and leave through the doors to see that the whole damn level is on fire. And if you thought that was weird, we have to fight two cancerous rodents that I completely forgot about during this run. We would come back to them later, I promise. I just ended up completing the level as normal, and it was time to move on to 1-3. I was kind of worried about 1-3, and if we would get the P rank first try, not only because of how many chances there are to die, but also because of the tight time requirements especially if we're going to be doing the secret encounter. But we powered through the level, following the red skull path first, then the blue skull path. Putting both the skulls on the pedestal caused the stained glass window near the entrance door to open, which revealed to us agony and tundra. We luckily destroyed them with ease, pressing the third button, grabbing the soap, killing hideous mass, and then getting the hell out of there. Oh, and I also actually remembered the rodents at around this time. <gasps> Wait, I forgot to do the secret encounter from the last goddamn level. So I went all the way back to 1-2, killed the rodents, and pressed the second secret button. 
It was time for 1-4, the climax level of layer 1, and where we would find the fourth and final button to open the door, guarding the secret weapon, also known as the slab revolver. However, this was also the level that contained the first genuinely hard boss of the run, an enemy called V2. The issue with V2 is he's so goddamn fast and his hitbox is so goddamn small that it's hard to damage him enough to kill him without first dying yourself. But quick speedrunning tip, when V2 smashes through the window, there's a certain amount of time in which he doesn't attack us, but we have the ability to damage him with coins. So we take this as an opportunity to do some coin punching and hopefully get V2 low enough to make the rest of the fight trivial. V2 had had enough and jumped through a gaping hole in the ceiling, leaving one of his arms behind, the Knuckle Blaster, a weapon we'll learn the full potential of in the next level, 2-1. For some reason, every time that I tried P-Ranking 2-1 before, I managed to miss one enemy out of the 69. Also, who else finds it funny that the first level in the Lust layer has exactly 69 enemies in it? I spotted King Minos chilling in the background, which made me remember that I had to P-Rank P-1 in this run. We'll see how well I do with that. Luckily, we didn't miss a single enemy and the P-Rank was ours. 2-2 was an absolute cakewalk. All we had to do was destroy a couple panels, kill a couple of enemies, and then we'd gain access to a weapon I've been wanting this whole run. The Rail Cannon. We speed ran through the rest of 2-2 and cleared the level with no problems. 2-3 was the level where we would be introduced to the Mind Flayer, every simp's favorite ultra kill enemy, and unfortunately reintroduced to the deadly traps from 0-2. Oh, and I also forgot to buy the other rail cannon variants of the shop at the start of the level, so I guess that was going to be saved for the next level, 2-4, the climax level of layer 2. You know, if I'm being completely honest, there's not much to write home about in this level. We bought the rail cannon variants at the shop, and then we kind of just beat up King Minos' corpse in 10 seconds and just left. I was kind of hoping for a little more of a fight from him, but yeah. I'd say that 3-1 is tied with 1-3 as one of the hardest levels of Act 1, except this time, instead of just hundreds of fodder enemies, this level was also full of dozens of heavy enemies that could easily kill me if I wasn't paying attention. After countless Cerberi, Mind Flayers, and Maurices, this was the point where my wrists were really starting to get sore and tired. But we pushed through the pain and got the second last P-Rank of Act 1. The final level of Act 1 is finally upon us. This is the level where we fight Gabriel, the will of God. The Archangel who carries out the will of the Council with brutal accuracy and efficient- Oh damn, the little GoPro killed him already? <laughs> Gabriel, you suck ass- You insignificant fuck! Imagine dying to a GoPro. Anyway, I jumped into the little eyeball pit to get the last P rank of Act 1. Act 1 was now complete, with an hour and 24 minutes left on the clock. Which sounds like a lot of time, but it isn't. It really isn't. Now, you might be expecting me to go and P-Rank P-1 right now, but I'm too much of a coward to go and do that without another secret weapon that I'll obtain in the next layer, Greed. This is 4-1, the first level in the Greed layer, and where we'd be introduced to one of the most annoying enemies in the run, Virtues. These little annoyances are somehow worse than drones, spawning beams of light that literally track you and burn you to a crisp. This level would also introduce us to a very fun and favorable mechanic, jewel wielding. The last room of this level would be way harder without it. After killing the last couple of Cerberi with juicy double projectile boosts, we obtained the first P rank of Act 2. 4-2 is another tricky level, but at least we have an abundance of dual wield power-ups to support us on our killing spree. Oh, also, you know, I think layer 4 is the layer for really annoying enemies, because we got a new waste of space to add to the roster. The Stalker! 
And this level also contains a mini boss fight against an insurrectionist, an enemy weak to fire, explosions, and this conveniently placed bottomless pit. We dash to the exit and acquire our P rank. 4-3 was going to be an annoying level. And it's probably because we literally can't see anything. At least there's a disco party at the end of the level so we can actually see what we're doing and get yet another P rank. You know, I'm starting to wonder how many times I've said P rank in this video. Oh boy, 4-4 was going to be the second level that we'd have to fight Mr. V2. Or as I like to call him, V2 squared. And that absolutely terrified me. V2 squared was somehow even harder than his earlier appearance, even after all the damage I did to him. During the fight I was weak, barely surviving, and having a really hard time trying to hit this guy. But by some sheer amount of luck, I got him to his second phase, and he broke a hole through the side of the pyramid. I followed in pursuit, sliding down the pyramid after V2 squared, ready to absolutely mangle the machine. After enough damage, I tripped him up and he fell to his death. Except one of his arms managed to stay intact. The whiplash. A grappling hook. Oh boy, I've been wanting this tool for so long. We gave the whiplash a quick spin, killing a couple of enemies before swiftly exiting the level and getting the final P rank of layer 4. But we weren't finished with 4-4 yet. We restarted the mission and grabbed the blue skull with our shiny new toy, opening the door to the Kitter Floor Room. Shooting the water with my electric rail cannon opened a door that led us to the secret weapon I needed to beat P-1. The Saw Blade Launcher. P-1 was obviously going to be a lot harder than all the other levels, but I've practiced this level a hell of a lot, and I've even gotten a time of 1 minute 29 seconds as my personal best. We placed the torch on the pedestal and moved through the gory hallway to find ourselves face to face with Flesh Prison. Flesh Prison has the ability to spawn eyes around him that shoot small laser beams at us, and after a set period of time, each eye will heal Flesh Prison a tenth of his total health. Nukes destroy all of the eyes in one attack if you aim it properly, but on the first attempt I failed the nuke and had to restart the level. The second attempt started off with another failed nuke, but I felt that I could save this attempt. And after a saw trap and lots of knocker blaster plus shotgun swapping, Flesh Prison was slain. And it was time to face Minos Prime. This is where the Saw Blade Launcher would come into play. During Minos' speech, we place a saw trap with roughly 20 blue saws and 5 orange saws. That's easily going to wipe out half of his health. We then stand right up next to him, toss 4 coins in the air, skip his speech, and shoot a charged slab piercer shot at the coins, almost insta-killing him. We cleaned up the last little remnants of his health, and just like that, we cleared the second hardest level of the entire run with a P rank in a mere 1 minute and 40 seconds. Let's just hope it goes that well with P-2. It was time for layer 5 and I'd finally be able to hear that beautiful saxophone again in the first level, 5-1. This is the first level where your skills with the whiplash are really put to the test, requiring you to fly around in massive bodies of water and just like in 1-4, this level had a big door locked behind three blue skulls. Except this time we couldn't just skip it by breaking through a window. Anyways, once we retrieved all three blue skulls, we headed up to our first encounter with a new enemy, Sentries. After clearing three waves of enemies, we dropped into the pit to get a P rank. 5-2 was pretty easy, but it did introduce us to idols, which gave me PTSD flashbacks for P-2. All we had to do for this level was grab two skulls, put them in their places, and then board the giant ship that emerged from the water. I was kinda low on health here, so I quickly went to go grab the red orb at the back of the ship, and then I quickly dashed back to the ferryman. An extremely easy boss fight if you know what you're doing. I killed him with relative ease and slid through the exit doors, getting yet another P rank. 5-3 wasn't too dissimilar to 1-3, a skull fetch quest locked behind hundreds of tough enemies. This level was also going to contain the fifth and final weapon of the game, the rocket launcher. But after we grabbed the rocket launcher, the ship turned upside down, flooding with water sinking into the river Styx. We quickly killed the last couple of enemies needed for the P rank and left. 
5-4 was the climax level of layer 5, containing the boss fight against the Leviathan. This boss was exactly like the corpse of King Minos, a massive enemy that doesn't put up much of a fight and dies in like 10 seconds at the hand of a little GoPro. We jumped into a pit that formed in the river Styx after killing the Leviathan and got the last P rank of layer 5. It was time for 6-1 and the level starts by blasting microwave ear rape into my ears. This level also introduced Swords Machine, a previous boss as a common enemy. Thanks game for making my job way harder than it already was. Somewhere along the way we fall into a small hole and the real music starts to play. My ears were blessed with the altars of apostasy. Anyway, if you didn't know, there's a secret jewel wield power up underneath this platform, so we use that to our advantage in this fight. We progress in the level until Gabriel says something pretty gay, Come to me. and then two hideous masses and the armies of hell spawn in to try kill me, but they're no match for my skill. This level was probably the most fun peering so far, but the next level was luckily another extremely easy one. 6-2 was another boss fight against Gabriel, except this time he was slightly deranged, a little bit insane, and really pissed off. Probably because of how much his ego was shattered by me in 3-2. And uh, what do you know? Act 2 is now complete, yes! We had roughly 46 minutes left on the clock, which is plenty of time to clean up the levels in layer 7. Except you're forgetting something. This is the part of the run I was dreading the most. P-2. You know, fun fact, this level took me a hundred hours of playtime to get the P rank. Anyway, we entered the Weezer room and opened our attack with a nuke and a charged piercer shot. We then placed the sword trap down to deal with the giant spoon-wielding lightning guy, and spammed coins here and there until the room was cleared. The doors slid open and we flew to the really annoying biblically accurate angels who were bullying me in the previous room and beat them both to death. Now we were about to face an extremely annoying encounter with an idled mind player, a swords machine, two sentries and a whole bunch of schisms. Most of the arena fights in P-2 go down with a sword trap and a lot of knuckle blaster shotgun spam. Thankfully this arena didn't deviate from that rule. We dashed into a dark corridor, leading us to a Cerberus that was blocking our path. We took him out with an Ultra Ricochet and took care of the street cleaners with the Piercer. The next arena was going to be the worst of the entire run, in which we'd have to fight Swords Machines, Virtues, Maurices, and a single Sentry, all whilst two idle mind players are trying to tear me to bits. Also that wrist pain I was talking about in 3-1 is back and is now worse than ever. I'll let myself explain it. <gasps> oh my golly gosh goodness me, my wrist is in a position I never imagined it could even possibly be in. I guess that's what P-2 does to you. You're not wrong. Anyway, the idols had been broken and all I had left to do was kill the mind players, which was pretty easy considering everything else I'd had to fight so far. But this is where things started to fall apart. After the next small encounter with two insurrectionists, we placed the blue skull on the pedestal and entered the spinning blood tunnels. The first tunnel went about as smooth as I expected, but we managed to stay alive and that was all that mattered. The second tunnel went a lot worse however and uh, watch this. I messed up. I messed up! No! Shlubberdub! I got so angry I started speaking the tongue of the elder gods, but this was bad. A gigantic time loss for us. But, it wasn't going to be the only failed P-2 attempt. After making our way back to the blood tunnels, the fight in the first room went terribly, and I got sniped by the sentry in an attempt to get some blood back. This was another gigantic time loss, and I was starting to doubt if I could even complete the run, with just 40 minutes left. But, I pressed onwards, clearing every room with ease, including the blood tunnels. Now it was time for the massive arena fight at the near end of the level, containing swords machines, ferrymen, strays, sentries, a hideous mass, Cerberus virtues, and the worst of all, an idled stalker. Without going into too much detail, we didn't have much difficulty with this encounter, slaying enemy after enemy with ease. But I was getting nervous about the upcoming fight. 
The elevator lowered and revealed to me a series of gigantic locked doors that were guarding another flesh cage. The Flesh Panopticon! This fight was quick but hard. All we had to do was survive until the boss had the need to heal. Then, two yellow glowing arms burst through the mouth of the Flesh Panopticon and ripped it apart. Sisyphus Prime, the hardest boss in the entire game stood right before me and delivered an extremely impactful speech. But we, we weren't really paying attention to the speech that much, we were more preoccupied with recreating the Minos insta-kill for Sisyphus. The damage we dealt to him was significant, but we'd have to finish him off with some good old-fashioned ultra-killing. Sisyphus had actually knocked me pretty low a couple of times, but I pulled through, finishing him off and achieving the hardest P rank of the entire run! We had done it! But with only 33 minutes left on the clock, we would have to hurry to P-rank the current final layer of Ultra Kill, Layer 7. As the doors opened to 7-1, my eyes were seared out the back of my head as the level flashbanged me with its pristine white glow. I grabbed the red skull and turned around to see- Oh, okay, the GoPro doesn't care that there's a bunch of creepy mannequins staring at him. In the next couple of rooms, the mannequins actually came to life and tried to kill me, but I took care of them pretty quickly. If I could describe the rest of most of this level, it was just a giant white maze full of really annoying enemies. That's until we got to this point in which two giant holes led deeper and deeper underground until we got to a sort of railway system. This time we couldn't just skip past the little train platform like we did in 2-4, as this one led to a mandatory fight against the Minotaur. The strat to kill this guy was just to shoot his big red belly and try not to get hit. And we killed him surprisingly quickly. We dashed towards the exit- Oh! Never mind, I guess the Minotaur wasn't done beating me up. We aimed for his stomach as much as possible, taking him out with one final shot from the shotgun. And this time the P rank was actually ours. 7-2 immediately starts us off with a boss fight against a gutterman? This early? Oh, never mind, it's just a heavy enemy that's been labeled as a boss for some reason. It was also around this point in the run where my heart was beating crazy fast and I was shaking out of nervousness, which uh, isn't very helpful for a speed run. The big goal for this level was clearing the rubble from this pathway, but we didn't have the necessary explosive to break it. That's exactly why we went to fetch a literal nuke to blow it up. On my way to find this explosive, I had a run-in with a new enemy, the gutter tank everyone's least favorite ultra kill enemy before the patch. Luckily, the patch made him a lot easier to kill, which I don't think was necessary, but hey, it works for us. Anyway, after killing three of these guys, we grab the red skull and go back to the station we were at before, placing the skull on the pedestal and parkouring our way to the second floor where the bomb was located. I lowered it onto the train platform I acquired a while ago and rode it all the way to the rubble, but we had to clean up some scrap first. The nuke blew up the rubble whilst we fought the two gutter machines, which opened a passage to a library. Huh. Funny seeing a completely untouched library in an active war zone. But that didn't last for long as multiple gutter tanks blew the whole place up. We returned fire to the remaining enemies and achieved another P rank. 7-3 was going to be difficult to say the least. The level contained multiple hard arenas and an extremely painful one at the end. This level was also a long one, so we essentially had to get this level first try, otherwise the run would be over. We fed all the three trees after slaughtering multiple challenging arenas and entered the big door back at the start of the level, which led us to, excluding P-2, the hardest arena fight in the whole game. Luckily, the level gave me a dual wield power up to destroy everything in this final arena, and so I ripped, and I said, oh, what's wrong game? I, uh, uh, ultra killed all the enemies in the final arena and finished the level with a P rank. Now there was only one level left. With 18 minutes left on the clock, I entered the final level, 7-4. We jumped through the door to see a ginormous machine bigger than any enemy I've seen yet. We scaled our way up the sides of this behemoth's legs, killing enemy after enemy with ease. We knew we had won this challenge just so long as we didn't somehow screw it up. We climbed so high up this giant metal giraffe that the security system had kicked in, ready to defend the brain at all costs. But uh, the security system didn't help Benjamin much as I broke every bit of defense he had. 
Then we entered the stomach of this mechanical beast as it began flushing its interior. We broke all of the idols and launched ourselves up to the brain. High DPS attacks always work great against big enemies, so we spiked him with a screwdriver and set up a saw trap that would hopefully take care of him pretty quickly. We managed to destroy the brain without the idols even spawning in, but Benjamin was set to self-destruct mode so we had to get it out of there quick. We killed all the remaining enemies in his stomach, opened this giant door, and flung ourselves away from the Earth Mover, watching as the massive construct blew itself to pieces. We turned back to the exit door and left, and what do you know? We got the final P rank of the entire run! We had done it! With just 13 minutes left to spare! We quickly checked over all the levels to confirm that we indeed received every last P rank that you could possibly get in Ultra Kill. We quickly quit out to see that our alternate Steam profile had 110 minutes of playtime logged on Ultra Kill, which is slightly more than what the timer said, but I guess we did mess around a bit on the new profile. But that's not the important part. The important part was that we were under the threshold and we could officially request a refund. So uh, yeah, it is possible to P rank every level in Ultra Kill and still get a refund. At least for now. And if you're wondering if I got my money back, I had received an email from Steam saying that my refund was accepted and my money was returned to my wallet. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys later.